Hey guys, Aaron here. Today we're going to be going over replacing the parking brake shoes and hardware on 2004 through 2015 Nissan Titan. Now the truck we're working on today is a 2009 Nissan Titan with about 200,000 miles on it. What we're experiencing is a bunch of noise coming from the right rear passenger tire. And uh, as the tire goes faster and faster, the noise becomes louder and louder. Um, could be a couple things, but most likely what it is is the brake shoe for the parking brake delaminates and part of the material becomes dislodged and um, goes inside the rotor there and just causes a bunch of problems and noise. If your truck is experiencing this, I wouldn't let it go for too long because um, whatever's broken inside the parking brake system can actually uh, affect the uh, ABS sensor and the eccentric ring on the axle, which can get pretty pricey. There's also a chance that you might have a broken spring inside of there um, or a broken toggle lever for the parking brake uh, cable, but we'll go over that in a minute. So before we do that, let's go ahead and go over the parts and tools we're gonna need to get the job done. As far as tools go, we'll need a 10 millimeter socket, a flat blade screwdriver, some needle nose pliers. I'm also gonna be using some needle nose vice grip pliers. These are extremely, extremely convenient and they make the job a lot easier. We're also gonna need a 3 8 ratchet for our 10 millimeter socket. I'm gonna be using my M12 uh, power ratchet, but a normal ratchet will work just fine. And of course, we'll need new parking brake shoes and the hardware kit for these shoes. Uh, there's one more part you may need if you have a pretty severe failure, and that's called the toggle lever. I'm not going to be replacing that on this video, but I'll show you what that is. And I'll put a link in the description for all the parts and tools I use during this video. All right, so here we are with the vehicle jacked up using a properly rated jack and jack stands. We have the tire removed. Next thing we need to do is remove the brake system. Uh, with a 10 millimeter socket, we're going to remove two bolts for the caliper, then we can remove the rotor. And that was also a good time to inspect the ABS eccentric ring uh, that's on the that axle. It's this cog looking piece uh, with teeth on the axle. Um, I've seen some of them damaged before from springs that have broken and come loose inside of here. Also your ABS sensor um, is right behind the backing plate and it goes into this hub area. It can become damaged too. So if you had any ABS lights come on your dash, uh, you definitely have something wrong here, but uh, everything looks good here, no lights on. So we're just gonna continue to remove everything. All right, now first thing we need to do is remove the clips that hold the parking brake shoes to the backing plate. What we're gonna do is take our finger and we're gonna put our finger on the back side of this pin right here, keeping it in place. That way we can take the clips and undo them with a pair of needle nose pliers, just like that. Now that we have that done, we have a little bit more wiggle room with the brake pad. We could take the springs off. All right. All right, so with everything removed, we can see the ABS sensor here. Just make sure nothing's broken and wrong with it. Yeah, mine looks pretty good. I'll probably just end up cleaning it up with some um, brake cleaner. And right here is our toggle lever. Um, this is the part here that the cable connects to. Um, mine's in pretty good shape. I won't be replacing it today. And if you do need to remove this and replace it, it actually comes undone pretty easily. There's no clips or springs. Simply just lift it out and it'll come undone. This little spur here goes right inside the cable and latches in the cable just like that. Then you can close it, kind of lift up and out. Oops. And that's how you put it back. Just like that. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is just gonna take a little bit of our grease and we're gonna put it on the backing plate where the brake, um, the parking brake shoe rides on the backing plate just to prevent any noises and squeaks happening. 
All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to reattach the uh, braking shoes to the backing plate before we put the springs on. To do that, we're gonna be using the pin on the backside and our little, little uh, keeper here to secure them properly. All right, so we got the top secure. Let's go ahead and work on the bottom now. All right, now that we got the um, shoes on the backing plate, it's time to go ahead and put our adjuster in. And the thread side is gonna go up. All right, once that's in place, it's time to put the small spring in. All right, this part can be a little bit tricky. Let's get this toggle uh, lever and put it in place. Make sure that the uh, brake shoes are right in the little crevice there of the toggle lever. It needs to be uh, right in place just like that. Now let's go ahead and get our spring uh, set in place. This one is a little bit difficult because it's, uh, it's pretty strong. All right, now that the rotor is on, we need to go ahead and push down the parking brake pedal. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna center the parking brake shoes inside of the rotor so we can start adjusting the parking brake shoes. So once you've depressed the brake pedal, um, it's time to go ahead and turn the star adjuster uh, inward towards the axle, and that's going to expand the parking brake shoes. Basically, what we want on the parking brake pedal is a nice firm pedal. Um, when we put our rotor on, what you're looking for is no engagement on the parking brake shoes. You don't want to feel the rotor sliding over those shoes at all, but you don't want the shoes too far, too far away from the rotor, um, which will give you too, too much of a spongy um, parking brake pedal. I ended up having to adjust this uh, little spur gear here about three or four times before the pedal got hard. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rotor back on. I'm gonna put the brake system back on. Um, and that pretty much concludes this video. Ho hope this video has helped you out. If it has, please like and subscribe and make sure to check out the links in the description for the parts and tools I used during this video. Thanks again as always guys. See you next time.